Hello and welcome back to the series of helpful little tutorials I've made for the GCA online community. This one is devoted to the art of photographing your work from critique. So I'm going to start with drawing because it's a little bit more forgiving to photograph than paintings. Paintings are in color and have glare, right? Which is when the thickness of a paint stroke can pick up a little bit of highlight from the light source and make the image look less like it does when it's sitting in front of you in your studio. The first most important thing that I'd like to say for photographing your work is to make sure that you get a pretty large light source on it. So what I have right now is my artificial light, um, but it isn't necessarily, uh, or it isn't necessary for you to use a large photography light like this. A large window would work. Anything that's a nice, big, soft light is going to be ideal. If we use our clamp lights, the very tiny lights that we use for, say, illuminating our still lives, we, sometimes it becomes very easy to overexpose one part of the image and not expose the rest equally, which can really mess with the values, um, the dark and light and contrast that your, that your camera is going to pick up. The second most important thing that I would uh, advise is to make sure that you don't stand in between your light and your image. So let's say I was using my iPad here to photograph this work. I don't want to get right in front of this light and then cast a huge shadow on it because it's going to it's going to read like there's some big gray looming figure in front of my paper and, and uh, that's not ideal. So try to put your light off to the side a little bit or turn your easel or however you're working in such a way that you're not interfering with your light source. Also make sure that your device that you're photographing your work with does not interfere with your light source. Um, it's very distracting to a teacher if we have to compensate for the iPhone shape shadow on the top of the drawing. So stay out of the way of the light and make sure that the light is sufficiently large. Those are my two biggest tips, both for painting and drawing. In drawing, it isn't necessary to have more than one light source illuminating your image. Uh, one big light, a window, whatever, is going to be enough. You could even use your overhead lights. Just be careful not to get in between the light source and your image. Uh, the other things that I'm going to talk about are largely uh, the things that we can do on our devices to make the images as critiquable as possible. And so what I'm going to do right now is switch over to a little screen share that I made photographing this drawing with my iPad. This works also for iPhones and a similar function exists on Android phones. For our purposes, our iPhones and our iPads and our Samsungs and any other kinds of like modern phones that you find are going to take a good enough image that we can like easily critique you. Um, older cameras tend not to photograph at the highest definition, but they would work. You do not need to invest in a DSLR or an SLR, some kind of uh, high resolution camera. We're not looking for that degree of resolution when we're critiquing you, and uh, it can be a much more complicated process getting a true image with the more advanced photographic methods. So I photograph all my work professionally with my iPhone. I know that's wrong. Usually when you're going to put it on your website, you take the care to get um, a high resolution image, but it's good enough is what I'm trying to say. And so I'm going to go through the methods of how I would photograph something um, on my iPad. And that's the similar process uh, to how I would advise you doing it. So essentially what you want to do is your camera app is good enough. The first thing is to open your, your camera app and point it at your uh, object and make sure that it's in focus. Sometimes if we've got a lot of contrast going on in the image, I'll hold the screen down as you see this little yellow image doing and it will auto focus the lock. It'll lock the focus so that then all I have to do is make sure that I am holding my screen up parallel and take the picture. It doesn't need to be perfectly parallel, just needs to be close to parallel. Because as you can see here, I can move through with the edit function. I can perspectively make it go left, right, and up and down. And that'll correct any perspectival problems that you might have ran into by not holding your camera straight up and down. 
Uh, we can also straighten the image. And so what we want to do is allow that grid to appear and kind of work with it until it's as close as possible. Uh, we don't want a huge amount of foreshortening in any of our images. It makes it, it hard for us as teachers to um, constructively criticize your perspective. Another thing that we can do is adjust the black point if you're in a graphite drawing. Uh, try not to make the image on your uh, phone or device look any different than it does in real life. Try to stand next to your drawing and make it look the most like what your drawing looks like in person. Uh, we can be seduced by all of these beautiful little editing functions that exist in the camera app. Please don't. Please don't try to um, exaggerate maybe the contrast range. Uh, that can be a really uh, seductive way to edit your, fil your, uh, your image. And we want something that is as true, like I said, to life as possible. Once you've got the image, you're ready to go. You can upload it to the Google Classroom, you can email it to your instructor, however it works. The process for painting is very, very similar. Um, again, that perspective correction that I just showed in the video, which I'm gonna make a slower screenshot of with the painting, um, is really helpful with uh, paintings. So. I'm gonna put a painting up here real fast and we're gonna talk about the small differences in photographing painting versus photographing uh, drawing. So it's still ideal to have a large light source, but now it becomes maybe desirable to have more than one light source. This is because of that pesky glare that I talked about. I don't paint terribly um, uh, noisily, meaning my brush strokes aren't big, meaty brush strokes. They tend to be rather lean and, and smooth, which makes it slightly easier to photograph. So forgive me that I don't have a, a Van Gogh to demonstrate this on, which would be more remarkable. But when I only have the one light source, it's going to, if there are some large brush strokes, it's going to cast little shadows off of those brush strokes. And so the way to counter that is to have a second light in the opposite direction. So this is ideal, and this is how you would have your work professionally photographed, is you would have two light sources which cancel the glare and cancel the cast shadows and get your image very well illuminated, which usually does a pretty good job of revealing accurate color. Now, my light sources right here are a little close. I might want them, I can't because of uh, cord distances, but I want, I want them more about three feet away from the painting on each side. That's ideal. That's because color gets washed out when our uh, light sources get too close to them. And then the process is very much the same. We open the camera app and we want to hold it up so that it's giving us the truest color. This is the difference we're really kind of tilting it through all the angles, left and right, up and down, until it looks the most like the painting. And don't worry about holding it uh, straight. Right now, the angle that works best for my image is like this. And so I'm gonna just take that photograph at that very oblique angle. I'm gonna back off from it just a little so that I have room for the perspective correction. Here's my image. You can see how uh, extreme the perspective that I needed to get no glare on it was. And so the first thing I do is I, I click the edit button wherever edit is on your app. And then the little cropping button is where we find the straighten. And so the first thing I do is I try to get it feeling like it's more or less straight, right? Then I want to correct the first and most egregious perspective. And that, you can tell, is the up and down. And I'm using the grid to kind of guide me. And I'm also trying to look at it pretty objectively, right? Right now it looks like it's overcorrected. I'm gonna take it back some, straighten it. I'm always having to straighten it. And then a little bit of left and right. It's almost impossible to get it to like really line up in that, in that little grid. 
Um, and we're not looking for perfection here. What we're looking for is something that has the least amount of foreshortening as possible. Now, my, <clears throat> my light sources being as close as they are has done something to really, as you can see just there, wash out a lot of the lights. So I'm starting with that auto and seeing what it does. I don't like it. What it, what it did was make some decisions that I don't agree with. So the first thing I'm going to do is turn down my exposure a little. Turning down my exposure just a little allowed some of that form information in that white duck to kind of come through. Uh, one that I tend not to touch ever is this one here, saturation. You can see that saturating it gives it lots more color and desaturating it is actually the most correct, and I use air quotes on the word correct, most correct way to see it in black and white. Uh, but we don't, we don't do that, so don't do that. Um, vibrance doesn't really do anything for your critique. It's going to alter the image to a point where um, we don't really want to see <laughs> what the camera's interpretation of your colors look like. Don't touch the warmth, don't touch the tint, don't touch the sharpness, don't touch the definition. Noise reduction, if you have a lot of glare, can help a little. Um, again, black point, if you feel like the range of contrast that you established in your uh, image isn't quite accurate. Um, don't touch the highlights, that one's a, a tricky one. So exposure, uh, the brilliance, if you must, although I tend not to. Mostly what I'll adjust is exposure, contrast, be discerning with it. It is far too easy to take your image and try to make it pop, which is what happens when we ex um, make our value range larger. My painting does not have anything like this value range in real life. But, you know, as you can see, I feel like I am getting a fair amount of glare on the, especially on the brown cylinder. So I'm probably going to try this again. Again, trial and error, maybe even take two or three and submit two or three different versions of the same uh, image to your uh, teachers. And they can do a good job of interpolating what the most likely um, physical experience of your painting uh, we get. So those are the big helpful tips I can give you for photographing your work. With paintings, make sure that you cancel all the glare that you can, and remember that it's most likely going to happen that you can't take the picture straight on because of glare. So be willing to perspective correct your image. Um, with drawings, make sure that any editing that you make doesn't exaggerate your contrast. It can be, again, seductive to edit more contrast into your drawing than exists in real life. And that's not going to be helpful for you or us, your instructors. Um, any other questions about photographing your work or anything that comes up in critique can definitely be um, handled by your instructors. We've all had to photograph our work for our websites or for professional reasons, so we have a great deal of experience with it. And we've also, at this point, our second year into GCA Online, we've been critiquing a lot of people's photographs of their work. And so your teachers are also a very valuable resource for any other questions that you might have about photographing your work. Um, you can also leave comments on this YouTube video, and if anything pressing comes up, I'll try to pop in and answer uh, questions there. So, best of luck in your GCA online instruction, and I hope to see all of you in future classes.